Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Buji here. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my PTS past questions from my school of nursing. So I just want you guys to use this past questions, you know, as part of your study materials. Yeah, and also please always make sure you ask your school or your seniors for past questions because Past questions is still based on from the particular school. So I hope you find this video helpful. So right, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so I have about nine past questions, I think, eight or nine, and some of these were given to me by one of my colleagues, was Destiny. Thank you so much for helping me with some of these past questions. The first one I have here is microbiology. So for microbiology, the first question, this is section B, theory. I know now NMC has probably changed, they've changed the um, format to CBT. So maybe schools now start changing their PTSLs as well, but I just thought I should still share this with you all. So for microbiology, this is the theory part. So section B is theory, section A was OBGR, so we take that. So for microbiology, we have question one, which is define parasitic infection. Question one B, give two examples of parasitic infection. Then question one C, explain the organisms causing parasitic infection. Then question one D, write six preventive measures of parasitic infection. Then question two A, discuss the four mode of transmitting HIV. Then question 2B, differentiate between HIV and AIDS. Then question 2C, what is partial antigen? Then question 2D, name any two antiretroviral drug. Then question 3, with a well labeled diagram, describe bacteria. Question 3B, describe five different shapes that bacteria assumes. Question 3C, define the following virus, sepsisemia anaerobe and disinfection. Question 4, write short notes on the following. Relevance of microbiology to nursing, notify the diseases and paradoxical carrier. So these were some of the questions and these are answer all questions and these are four questions. So yeah, that's microbiology. Yeah, so the next one here is physics. So, the first question, question AI, List any four reasons why pregnancy mothers are asked to do ultrasound scan rather than x-ray. Question AII, define radiation. Question BI, list the types of x-rays and mention five characteristics of x-rays. Then question BII, mention three precautions a radiographer should observe while working with x-ray from time to time. Question 2. Define hyperthermia. Enumerate four ways a nurse can generate heat for a cold patient. Then question BI. Explain the physics of the cooling effects of methylated spirits on the skin. BII. A food supplement contains 6,455 calories. What is the energy in joules contained in that food? Question C. Why is it advisable to use methylated spirits to sterilize a clinical thermometer rather than boiling water? Then question 2D, a hypothermic patient is weighed 57 kg and is having a temperature of 31.8 degrees Celsius. On treatment, the patient's temperature rises to 37.1 degrees Celsius. Calculate the quantity of heat energy produced by the body if the specific heat capacity of the body is, is 3.6 times 10 raised to the power of 3. So question 3 is define fundamental quantities and list any four with their units. And 3b list the types of signal manometer we have. Question 3c the staircase needed from the ground floor to the first floor of the hospital building contains 48 steps each of height 0.25 meters. A man of body mass than 7 kg takes a time of 1.5 minutes to move from the ground to the first floor using the steps. Calculate I, work done by the man on himself. I, I, power developed by the man. I, 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 what kind of energy did the man expand? And number 3D, 
list four types of measurement errors and explain zero error. Then question four, define science and physics. Then question four B, explain any three relevance of the branches of science to be free. Question four C, list four scientific methods slash inquiries accordingly. Then question four D, Mention two relevance of scientific inquiry to meet with me. The next one here is behavioral science. So the first question is also to answer all questions. The first question here is, there are many groups that people form for different reasons or purposes. A. Define a social group. B. Explain the stages slash processes of a social group. C. Discuss a primary social group. Then D. State any four characteristics of a primary group. Then question two, leadership is key to attaining organizational goals and there are various definitions of the term. A. Define the term leadership. B. Discuss the three major types of leadership. C. Highlight three qualities of a good leader. D. List two uses of intelligence tests. Question three, define counseling. B. Discuss the steps in process of counseling. C. Give four aims for counseling therapy. And D. Mention two advantages of new methods of counseling. So most of these questions, they carry our 15 marks each in total, like 15 marks. So I think everything was about 60 marks for question for theory. So question four, psychological challenges could pose a lot of illness, especially in these times that we are. A. Define psychological illness. B. State any two examples of psychosomatic illness, illnesses. Then C. List 10 causes of psychosocial problems. And D. With the aid of a well-labeled diagram, describes the pathophysiology of psychosomatic illnesses. So that is for behavioral science. So now I have the rest as you know, paper past questions. So the first one here is anatomy and physiology, and this is also the theory to answer all questions. Question one A describe the subdivisions of the pelvis. Then B list the types of pelvis and describe the gynecoid pelvis. Then C describe pelvic examination. And D what are the differences between male and female pelvis? So just so you know, when you're answering these questions, just make sure you, you know, give a detail. Sometimes I even draw, when you don't ask me to draw, because most times I remember the drawings where are the explanations. So if I include a drawing, not like a drawing, like a sketch, and also explain, it literally boosts the mark. I think I got a B in anatomy, I don't know. And question two, A, describe the salivary glands. B. Discuss the functions of the saliva. C. Outline the functions of the small intestine. And D. List the parts of the small intestine. Question 3. A. Explain the term blood pressure. B. Describe the role of baroreceptors in maintenance of blood pressure on a short term basis. C. Mention any six blood clotting factors you know. D. State the two main types of leukocytes. Then question 4. The lungs are vital organs in the body because of the important role they play in respiration. A. Mention the major organs of the respiratory tract. B. With the aid of a well-labeled diagram, describe the lungs. C. Explain the cycle of breathing. And D. Highlight the muscles of respiration. So that is it for anatomy and physiology. Okay, so the next one I have here is chemistry, yes, applied chemistry. So the first question here is explain the following terms. This is also to answer all questions. A, X-ray, radioactivity. Then B, define radioisotopes. I, I, list four uses of radioisotopes. C, explain the biological effects of radiation. Then question two, explain briefly what is meant by air pollution. There's three ways to prevent air pollution. C. Identify three measures of preventing iron from rusting. D. Explain three methods of absorbing oil spillage in an aquatic habitat. Then question 3a. Explain what you understand by the term 
ionic theory, then B lists the three laws that govern the discharge of ions, C explain the other listed terms, electrolysis, and wrote electrodes and electrolytes. Then question four, define the following terms, acid, base, salt, then 4B, mention two chemical properties of an acid with an equation. Then C, step three uses of an acid. Then the next one here is foundation of nursing. So foundation of nursing is a bit more complex. It's longer. Both of them are just four questions. This is A, um, question 1A, define nursing process. Then question 1B, in a cyclical form, Identify the steps or stages of the nursing process. Then C, enumerate the characteristics of the nursing process. And D, a 35 year old patient is admitted into the ward during your shift, during your shift duty with history of fever, abdominal pain, loss of appetite, and persistent vomiting. In a tabular form, draw a nursing care plan to manage these patients. Then question 2A. Define bed making. I, I list six steps of bed making. So number two B, Mrs. Ojo, who has been in the maternity ward unconscious, was suddenly discovered to have developed pressure sores on her sacral region, which while making her bed. I enumerate two causes of pressure sores. I, I describe the stages of development of pressure sore and I I I List six measures you take as a nurse to assist this patient towards preventing pressure sores development. Question three, define oxygen administration. B, list four indications for administration of oxygen. And C, complete the following tabulations with the various colors used to differentiate medical gas cylinders. I'm going to put it on the screen, I think, because it's just gas, the color. So oxygen gas, what color does it give? Like what color of um, gas cylinder should it be? So oxygen, hydrogen, nitrous, oxide, and nitrogen. What are the colors? Question 3D. Explain the procedure for oxygen administration to a group of student nurses posted to your ward on clinical posting. Then 3E. List four complications of oxygen administration. Then question 4A. Define standard precaution. Then 4B. Explain briefly any two primary goals of standard precaution and first C explain the following observation of patients, palpation, precaution, auscultation, and vital signs. Then nutrition is also four questions to answer. I think they are all answer all questions here. Yeah. Number one A as a pupil midwife, write short notes on importance of budgeting to nutrition, details of budgeting as related to nutrition. C P M. Question two: Discuss the benefits of breastfeeding to both mother and baby. Then B. As a pupil midwife, describe the process of breastfeeding on the uterus. Then question three: Write short notes on glycogen. Discuss the digestion of carbohydrates in the mouth. Enumerate the functions of carbohydrates. And question four: Define nutrients. Explain what is meant by modified diet and see write short notes on factors affecting food and nutrition. So the next one here is use of English. The first question is 15 marks actually. Question one: The place of English language cannot be over emphasized. Discuss freely. Then question two: What is letter writing? Then B: Write a letter to your state governor stating the problems. Facing education in the states. Then question three: A. What is essay writing? B. List and explain the types of essay writing. Question four: A. What is an adjective? Then B. List and explain the types of adjective. And now the last one is primary health care. Question one: Define primary health care by WHO. Then B. Discuss the multidisciplinary and the intersectoral team in primary health care. C. Write short notes on concepts of primary health care. Then D. Enumerate the components of primary health care. Question 2A. Define diagnostic technique. B. Explain five diagnostic techniques. And C. Explain the purpose of diagnosis. Then question 3. The federal government established various committees in PHC 
and these committees are found in each of the local government areas in Nigeria. A. Explain the purpose for the establishment of these committees. B. List six of these committees. C. Describe the composition and functions of the following. I. Village Development Committee. World Development Committee. Health Facility Committee. And then D. Write out the full meaning of the following abbreviations. I. W. D. C. I. I. C. H. S. B. I. 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 C. H. M. T. And I. V. T. B. A. So question four. A. Define community mobilization. B. Describe the basic steps of community mobilization. C. Enumerate five constraints of community mobilization. So, yeah, that was the last one. If you know the answers to some of these, please leave in the comment section so that others can benefit as well. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and share with your classmates, your friends, everyone. And also leave a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed thanks so much for watching until next time bye